The community of Susukino, a vibrant district renowned for its nightlife in the city of Sapporo on Hokkaido's northern island in Japan, was rocked by the shocking news of the arrest of three family members in connection with the murder and dismemberment of Hitoshi Ura, a 62-year-old man. Surveillance footage from a hotel unveiled a chilling sequence of events. Mr. Ura entered the establishment alongside a woman carrying a substantial suitcase. This unsettling incident unfolded on July 2, 2023. Approximately three hours later, the same woman was captured on security cameras exiting the premises with the same large suitcase, but now dressed in different attire. The plot thickens as it is alleged that the perpetrator, a 29-year-old woman, committed this crime with the assistance of her parents. Welcome to true crime capital. This is the case of Hitoshi Ura. Sapporo is renowned for its winter sports, with Mount Teen having served as the venue for the 1972 Winter Olympic Games and the Olympic torch still stands as a testament to that history in the district. It offers a diverse array of ski trails suitable for all levels of skiing proficiency, accommodating everyone from beginners to advanced skiers. Susukino, located in Chuoku, Sapporo, Hokkaido, Japan, is a prominent red light district, ranking among the major ones in the country alongside Kabukicho in Tokyo and Nakasu in Fukuoka. Presently, this district is bustling with numerous restaurants, bars, hotels, and establishments catering to adult entertainment. Here, in Sapporo, Hokkaido, Japan, meet Runa Tamura, a 29-year-old unemployed woman who resides with her parents, father, Osamu Tamura, 59, and mother Hiroko Tamura, 60. Osamu Tamura holds the position of a doctor and serves as the head of the psychiatry department, primarily responsible for overseeing the care of inpatients requiring mental health treatment. It's worth noting that he does not perform surgical procedures at the hospital. On the other hand, Hiroko Tamura, the mother is employed as a part-time worker. Runa Tamura is suspected to be suffering from a mental health condition. According to neighbors, she has faced challenges attending school and has exhibited a reclusive behavior pattern since her early years. On July 1st, 2023, prior to his check-in at a love hotel where the subsequent incident occurred, Hitoshi Ura had attended a disco event that was popular among the LGBT community. Love hotels, often used for intimate encounters, typically offer room rentals both on a nightly basis and by the hour. At approximately 10.50 p.m. on July 1, 2023, Runa and Hitoshi entered a short-stay hotel situated in the red-light district of Susukino, located in the city of Sapporo on Hokkaido, a northern island of Japan. It's worth noting that Runa was dressed in white, and she was accompanied to the hotel by her father Osamu. However, it is also alleged that her father never entered the hotel, but waited for her in the car. In the morning of July 2nd, an unsettling revelation was made by a hotel employee who entered Mr. Ura's room after he failed to check out. The hotel employee then discovered his lifeless body, reclined inside the bathtub, with the grim detail of his head missing. I can't begin to imagine how it's like discovering the body of someone that has passed on, but also discovering them with a missing head. It must be something that one can be in therapy for, for a long time. I do hope that this employee is doing well, or rather recovering well. Hitoshi Ura, aged 62, held a respectable position as an office worker, married with loved ones. After his disappearance, his wife reported him missing to the authorities on July 3rd. It was through the combined efforts of the police and his family that his body was later identified. According to investigators, the hotel's surveillance footage revealed the victim's entrance into the Love Hotel, accompanied by an individual carrying a substantial suitcase. Mr. Yura checked in with his companion at around 11 p.m. on July 1st. The CCTV recordings displayed Mr. Yura during the check-in process, alongside a woman believed by the police to be the suspect, Runa Tamura. Law enforcement is also entertaining suspicions that Runa's father may have provided transportation to and from the hotel. The footage seemed to depict two individuals appearing as women checking in at the hotel. Mr. Ura was known in the red light district for his involvement as a cross-dresser who frequented various bars and clubs. Later that same night, the camera captured a woman departing with the same large suitcase. On the night in question, Runa left the hotel alone, approximately three hours after entering, and was dressed in black. A search involving over 200 officers was launched to locate her. Notably, none of the victim's belongings were discovered in the hotel room, and the bed appeared undisturbed. 
On July 4th, the car believed to have been driven by Mr. Ura was located in a toll parking lot in Sapporo. The police uncovered information suggesting a troubled history between Runa and Mr. Ura, which authorities are considering as a potential motive which we will discuss in just a moment. It has been determined that the father and daughter purchased a saw and a suitcase in Sapporo before the incident. Investigators believe that a saw was used for the decapitation, while a suitcase was utilized to transport the severed head. The concentration of bloodstains in the bathroom has led investigators to consider the possibility that the victim was attacked when his guard was down. An autopsy conducted on Yura's body revealed indications that he was likely beheaded using a cutting tool. Furthermore, it was determined that his cause of death was hemorrhagic shock due to blood loss from stab wounds. Hemorrhagic shock is caused by acute reduction in the effective intravascular volume from bleeding. The decapitation was executed using a blade, and the severed head was subsequently removed from the crime scene. On July 24th, both Runa Tamura and her father, psychiatrist Osamu Tamura, were placed under police custody. They are currently facing a range of charges, including mutilation of a corpse, theft, and disposal of a body. On July 25th, approximately 20 blades, including four saws, were confiscated from Runa Tamura's residence. Some of these confiscated blades were found in her room. Mr. Ura, the victim, was a frequent patron of bars and clubs associated with explicit activities and would often present himself in a feminine appearance. Furthermore, on July 25th, just a day after her husband and daughter were arrested, law enforcement apprehended Runa's mother after the discovery of Mr. Ura's decapitated head in the bathroom during a search of the family's residence. The police also gathered various items, including clothing and the same suitcase from the CCTV footage found inside the home. The legal representatives for the parents have issued a statement refuting any involvement in the murder or abandonment of the deceased's body. There hasn't been communication defending Runa against the charges she is facing. I'm sure you're curious about the motive behind this tragic killing. Runa's grandfather had noticed her long-standing preference for women over men, leading her to withdraw from social interactions. This, compounded by her mental health struggles, drove her to maintain a solitary existence. In May 2023, after enduring loneliness for most of her life, Runa decided to break free from her seclusion by attending an LGBTQ party at a club on Hokkaido Island. She was eager to connect with like-minded women and escape her isolation. It was at this event that she struck up a rapport with a woman in her 40s. Following some enjoyable moments at the club, they made the mutual decision to go to a nearby love hotel. However, upon their arrival, Runa was taken aback to discover that her female companion was, in reality, a man named Hitoshi Ura. He confided in her that, despite his penchant for feminine attire, his romantic preferences were directed towards women. Shockingly, allegations arose that Hitoshi had assaulted Runa without her consent, capturing the entire incident on film. Subsequently, he used the footage to threaten and relentlessly stalk her, incessantly requesting further meetings. Runa eventually confided in her parents about her dire situation. Her father, Osamu, who specialized in mental health, was consumed by a deep desire to safeguard his daughter. Recognizing the vulnerability of individuals with mental health challenges, he took the initiative to contact Hitoshi, earnestly urging him to stay away from his daughter. At first, Hitoshi complied with the request, but as time passed, he broke his promise and resumed tormenting Runa. Allegations suggested that Hitoshi's obsession with Runa grew to such an extent that he attempted to unlawfully enter her house, further inflaming Osamu's fears for his daughter's safety. To the point where Osamu, consumed by concern, even began having his meals away from their family home to keep a vigilant eye out for any sign of Hitoshi. In response, the family joined forces and deliberated on how to definitively address the situation ultimately leading to the events that unfolded on the crucial night in question. Upon learning about the alleged assault, the grandfather criticized the parents for not reporting it to the authorities. In response, the father allegedly explained, he assured us that he wouldn't repeat it and vowed to disappear from our lives. So, we chose to handle the matter privately. If the assault allegations are indeed true, I wish Runa could have turned to the police for help instead of taking matters into her own hands. Share your thoughts on the case in the comments section below. Please ensure that you are subscribed, as we will provide an update upon the conclusion of the case. Until next week, stay safe out there.